Hello and welcome to this video on Peltier devices. These are also more properly called thermoelectric coolers or thermoelectric cooling devices. These are interesting as they behave like a heat pump used for air conditioners, but they rely on a solid matter process to, well, communicate the necessary energy and therefore change temperature. By contrast to this solid state, an air conditioner needs cooling gases that are compressed or expand to release or capture heat. The physical and solid nature of Peltier devices makes them slightly more reliable in terms of a few parts to break, but it still relies on an underlying principle called the Peltier effect. It's also something that requires quite a bit of energy on a large scale. This is why they aren't really popular for heating and cooling of houses, at least not by comparison to something like a heat pump. The Peltier effect is well, one of three things that comes into play, although this is the primary one. It requires that your Peltier device is made up of three parts. Conductive material, a substrate on which this sits, and, and some sort of stand for it to operate on. Generally speaking, you'll find these are all set up as an electrical series. That is, everything follows it in a sequence, and they're all part of the same grid, but they're all attached to each other so that current flows from one to the next. You do however need to use DC current for this, whereas AC current will not work. DC is working because it will bring the heat from one side to the other. AC is not as good for this, largely because the current fluctuates. Because you are sending energy directly through it, and you have conductive material, and you are sending energy into it, one side will get cold while the other side gets hot. And this is why they're used as a cooling device. You draw the heat out from one end, and you pump it out on the opposite side. Very much like the way that air conditioners work with compressing gas to store heat, and then when that heat is released, the gas is allowed to expand back to its intended volume. In a slightly simpler terms, this is effectively the direct conversion of temperature to electric voltage, or more importantly for most applications, voltage to temperature difference. When we look at the Peltier device, the way it works is very simple. When you apply voltage to one side of it, it allows heat to be transferred from that side to the other. This cools the first side. This is done by a temperature gradient in part, but the temperature gradient is created by altering the charge of charge carriers that diffuse from the hot side of your Peltier device to the cold side. The advantages to this by comparison to something like an air conditioner are as said, it is a solid state device, in other words, no moving parts. Very much like a solid state disc or SSD is much more reliable than a mechanical HDD or hard disk drive. This will reduce wear and to a certain extent stress, therefore fewer instances of failure. Because it's a solid product, the wear and tear is not really measured in the actual physical measurements of the device, like for example wear and tear on brakes. Rather, it's measured in time, and most units now are expected to exceed 100,000 hours before any failure will occur. There are disadvantages to this, and we've mentioned one of these already. That is, they aren't as efficient when we talk about energy, particularly electricity. Unfortunately, something like a heat pump like vapor compression systems for an air conditioner are, generally speaking, much more efficient for what they do. On a very small scale, a Peltier device is efficient and effective for what it does, largely because it's so small and it's self-contained. Whereas once you try to get to something much larger, like for example a house service unit, similar to an air conditioner, you will be looking at a very large, very energy demanding product and that's why they're not really used for that purpose. As far as the actual Peltier device itself is concerned, it does have one other drawback, and that is, by the nature of putting energy in the form of electricity into the device, you will be generating heat, and this is going to work to the opposite effect of the side you're trying to cool. As a result, the Peltier effect is somewhat reduced. In short, Peltier devices are an entirely solid state product, and they can operate in any condition just about, although they do generally do better when you have extremes of temperature in one environment and another that are isolated. 
for example, between the inside of a house and outside. They can also operate in any situation, that is orientation, gravity, or anything else. They don't really require any uh, special setup. Peltier devices are also largely self-contained in terms of heating and cooling. You can use exactly the same part in terms of the nature of it to do both. It also has a very long lifespan, and they are, to an extent, much more environmentally friendly than your air conditioner or heat pump would be. And that's because you don't need any compressible gases that can be dangerous to the environment. Thinking particularly of fluorocarbons in that respect. But finally, they're also very small, which makes it easy to apply to a specific scenario, situation, or device. This is why until the mid-early 2000s, they were rather popular as a novelty for cooling of CPUs and similar, although that has since died off considerably. A Peltier device is, much like other things that are used for niche applications, something that takes advantage of natural phenomena and rules of the way the world works, in this case combining both heat and electricity to get the desired effect through the use of a multi-layered product that through those multiple layers, works to a unexpected and somewhat unexpected result. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.